Hey YouTube, it's ICU and welcome to the 221st episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. Alright, and to start off, I wanted to say that this week's episode is going to be slightly more condensed. I'll have links to everything down below in the more info if you need additional details again on any of the topics. And up first, I wanted to discuss jailbreaking. Now, this year we have kind of a unique situation because not only have we received more iOS developments than in years past, but also jailbreak development has picked up as well. Let's start by discussing the former of the two though. So, iOS updates. Now, in the past, Apple hasn't really moved beyond the iOS x.1.x updates since the days of iOS 4. So meaning for iOS 6 and iOS 7, Apple simply issued Point one updates. That was the latest. Well, now we have confirmation that again, Apple will move not only beyond iOS 8.2, because of course we do have iOS 8.2 in developer testing stages. The fifth beta iteration is available for again, registered iOS developers through Apple's official software development portal. But we also have iOS 8.3 coming. Earlier this week, Apple seeded the first beta iteration of the firmware to again, registered developers. So we know that not only will Apple move beyond 8.2, but also 8.3, and we have additional rumors even moving beyond that as well, and I'll get into those in just a second. But first, let's talk about jailbreak development. So previously, when the Evaders were the primary dev team on the jailbreak scene, we'd be lucky to receive two jailbreak utilities a year. And in most cases, like with Evasion, it would just be one major jailbreak utility. And then when the foreign Pangu dev team, I don't just mean foreign based on their location, but also foreign in the sense that we previously hadn't even heard of them, stepped onto the jailbreak scene and released their first utility dubbed Pangu 7 to jailbreak iOS 7.1.2 everything started to change because from there, the utility went fully unpatched until Apple issued iOS 8 to the general public. And then once that happened, of course, Pangu 7 was patched, but the team did issue Pangu 8 about a month later. So at the time, the latest public version of iOS was only unjailbreakable for about a month before the group issued their next utility. And of course, I'm not going to go over all of the details in between in great detail because of course I have numerous times, but essentially Apple patched the jailbreak with 8.1.1 and then Taiji came onto the scene and released a utility by the same name to jailbreak 8.1.1 and then of course Apple issued 8.1.2 which didn't patch Taiji so the team updated their tool to jailbreak 8.1.2 and then Apple released iOS 8.1.3 which did patch the vulnerabilities exploited by Taiji to achieve an untethered jailbreak. However, it wasn't all bad because jailbreakers could still downgrade from 8.1.3 to 8.1.2 to succeed successfully achieve an untethered jailbreak. Well, now that's no longer a reality because Apple has stopped signing 8.1.2, meaning they no longer validate restores to the firmware. And if they don't, then essentially it's impossible to restore. So what I mean by that is if Apple is signing a firmware, that's good and great. You can restore to it, but if they're not, you can't. And there won't be a workaround in the future for new devices. You simply will not be able to downgrade them because of all of the safeguards that Apple has in place. So with that said, you can downgrade from 8.1.3, meaning those who purchase new devices running the firmware or who mistakenly update will not be able to jailbreak until a new utility is released. And that likely won't happen until iOS 8.2 is issued, which is why the firmware is so important aside from offering Apple Watch integration, of course, Apple's upcoming post PC smart wearable. And the primary reason for that is that 8.1.3 is simply too minor of a release to warrant the use of additional exploits that could otherwise be saved for a more substantial firmware that we know for a fact is coming. iOS 8.2, which is rumored to be released next month in March with the Apple Watch following in April. However, while Taiji did previously state that the group was planning on providing surprises for every public iOS release, the group has since removed the message from their official website. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that Taiji won't hold true to their initial promise, but keep in mind that the group utilizes a single individual by the name of XN for jailbreak development, and it could just be that he became overwhelmed when trying to create a jailbreak utility for 8.1.3 because we already know that they've successfully achieved another untethered jailbreak using vulnerabilities and techniques that haven't been disclosed to Apple that they're planning on utilizing for iOS 8.2. So at this point in time, I think it's safe to say that we will not see an iOS 8.1.3 jailbreak. However, of course that could change because we do have Pangu on the scene as well, but it's likely that either group will release a utility for iOS 
iOS 8.2 or beyond. So keep that in mind. And while we're on the topic of jailbreaking, I want to discuss something else that's actually extremely important, the legality of jailbreaking. So as of recording this video, jailbreaking is completely legal under the DMCA or Digital Millennium Copyright Act here in the United States. However, that could change because the portion that legally allows for jailbreaking is up for review and we might not get exemption where jailbreaking is concerned this time around. And I have more details on that in the last episode of Best Tech and Phone Rumors. I highly recommend watching that if you want additional clarification. However, there is something that you can do to help. You can sign the EFF petition that I do have linked to down below in the more info. Again, it is extremely important if you jailbreak to keep it legal here in the US. So of course, I just wanted to mention that again in this week's episode. And now next up, let's discuss iOS 9 and even iOS 8.4. Similar to iOS 8.1.1, 8.1.2, and 8.1.3, MacRumors has detected hits from devices running both iOS 9 and iOS 8.1.4 in their web logs. And then following that, 9to5Mac chimed in to provide their input on the situation. So let's first talk about iOS 9. It's rumored to essentially be the Snow Leopard equivalent of iOS, meaning that it will be significantly slimmed down versus iOS 8, not only in file size, but it will also drastically improve performance across all devices. So this will be particularly great for lower end 16 gigabyte devices. And now for iOS 8.4, which is allegedly codenamed Copper, it will feature a music streaming service from Apple, which will likely be the company's rebranded version of their own Beats music service. And now let's talk about apps. So in the App Store, as of now, developers have a current file size limit of two gigabytes, meaning apps that they upload can only be two gigs. However, Apple has now extended that to four gigabytes. So apps can now be twice the size of before, which fits in perfectly with the rumors of iOS 9 being smaller in file size, because of course, those with lower end capacity iDevices will be able to install more of those four gig apps. However, 16 gigabyte owners will definitely be limited. And now let's briefly talk about Apple's forthcoming iPhone 6S, which isn't expected to be released until fall alongside iOS 9. Now, in the last episode of Best Tech and Phone Rumors, I discussed recent rumors suggesting that the device would feature Apple's new Force Touch technology that they're first planning on implementing into the upcoming Apple Watch, which will essentially be able to distinguish between regular presses or taps and more forceful ones, and will be able to change what the device does accordingly. Well, since then, rumors have continued to circulate and become more popular, so it could very well be one of the key selling points of Apple's iPhone 6S and the iPhone 6S Plus. Now, personally, I see it as being a really great feature for Apple to implement. From a software development standpoint, there are absolutely so many different things that you can do and so many approaches that you could take. For instance, you could bring up additional app-specific menus or provide more information based on how hard you actually tap on the display. And I'm actually going to make that the question of the day. So what do you guys think about Apple implementing implementing Force Touch tech in the iPhone 6S and the iPhone 6S Plus, let me know down below in the comments section or on Best Tech Info. And really quick, I also wanted to mention that previously I told you guys that I was planning on making part two and part three of my recent top tweak series. Well, since then there have been numerous setbacks from iOS 8.1.3 news to 8.3 and beyond. So do you guys want to see a new top tweaks video and then a subsequent one in light of the fact that the current iOS 8 jailbreak has been patched and there isn't one available for the latest public firmware. Again, just be sure to let me know down below. And I'm also working on something really exciting that I think a lot of you will enjoy. And if you want more information on that, as well as when I release new videos, if you aren't already subscribed, just be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, add me one of your circles inside of Google+, follow me on Instagram at ICUID, and subscribe to my secondary YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash ICUID. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.